Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my garden. So, I haven't done an update in a month. Actually, a actual full month. Um, last time I did this, it was May 20th. It is June 21st today. It is the first day of summer. I had lost so much of my garden at the last garden update. And it's been a month and I've actually got stuff starting to come back. So let's take a look. Um, after my last garden update, I went to the farmer's market the next week and I got myself some peppers and they were like this tall when I got them. And in the last three weeks now, they have tripled in size. This is three weeks in my tank. Wow, I think somebody needs to get their vehicle fixed. This is two weeks. These ones I went and got two weeks ago. Um, they're all the same kind. They're um, called Candy Cane Reds. I got ants all over them. Ants and flies. Those are the number one things that um, pollinate peppers is ants and these one little funny flies see if I can get a close-up of one those things I don't know what kind of flying bugs those are but I've got lots and lots of peppers coming in so I'm very happy I've got like four five or six peppers coming in dozens and dozens of flowers flowers that have been pollinated as you can see and we'll grow peppers. And there's a couple more that are gonna grow peppers for me. Um, I have n only lost one um, pepper so far. So, or one pepper flower so far that didn't get pollinated, but otherwise the rest of them have all been pollinated and are growing peppers for me, so. I'm extremely happy then what I did was out of this big tank of basil over here I took and moved basil plugs in with the peppers to uh, let them grow and let them create now this pepper tank was the tank that was inside my house that I had planted all of those tomato seeds in and about three weeks ago the tomato seeds started popping up and a week ago I had to move full-size tomato plants out of this tomato bed and into a or out of this pepper tank and into a different tank and I'll show you those on a different walk around because this walk around is just gonna be my front area here same with this this tank, I don't remember planting tomatoes in this tank. That is a tree seed that got missed. You see it? That's a tree seed that got missed. It becomes a full-on tree. See, these are the leaves you always see me pulling. These double long ones. It turns, onto a, turns into a full-on tree real fast. Ooh. See? Right in there. full-blown tree really fast anyways um same with here I had some I never planted tomato seeds in this tank this was the tank that was inside the house not this one but for some reason some tomato plants popped up in here and I moved the tomato plants from here to one of them came over here and one of them went over to a tank in back these ones here tomato plants are from some seeds that popped up in back and then I took a basil plug from out of the basil pot and put it in here because you always want to have basil with tomatoes and peppers they're great companion plants this I had planted a bunch of basil in here but forgot that this was actually lilies and so the lilies grew up and took over but no basil grew um, 
To make matters worse, this year, absolutely none of my lily plants have actually produced flowers. They've only produced green, um, which is really sad and depressing, but it's their second year being moved to a new place. So last year they were moved into here. This is their second year here. Last year when they were moved into this pot, they already had flowers started and established on them when they moved. So it's kind of understandable. I'm pulling weeds down here. It's kind of understandable that um, the lilies didn't produce any flowers this year, any actual flowers. So we're just gonna let them be, let them be green and happy. Here, these are some cabbages that I had planted in some little cups, and I had some red cups up here. Um, I transplant them out of the red cups and there's three of them in here. I doubt they're really going to do too much or get too big. But I'm just letting them do what they're going to do and see what happens. Alright, over here in this tank here. These are three of the very few. I only had seven tomatoes that I had planted in my house last until now. Survive until now. These are three of them pulling weeds. These are three of them that have survived until now. This is a big lettuce patch. As you can see, I have lettuce growing in here. And the lettuce will get cut back like this did and eaten. Um, these are three tomatoes that survived. This one was that itty bitty teeny tiny thing about a month ago. And same with this. This one here was rather small about a month ago and this one was decent sized a month ago and now it's gotten taller and I've got actual flowers and a tomato coming in. These are the large reds. Um, the lettuce here will get that middle spot got harvested like two three days ago for salads. Um, once I'm done with this walk around of the front patch here um, I'll be harvesting these ones around here to make tonight's dinner. So those are my large red cherries that I had planted inside in the tank. They made it all the way out to here and survived the crazy solar minimum that we started this year um, and the cold temperature and the crazy spring. So the best tomatoes that I get off of these three plants I'll save the seeds from the best tomatoes to plant my own next year and I've decided that instead of planting inside I'm going to directly plant into the tanks on the on the full moon in May just to see what happens to see if they survive because I have some tomatoes in the back I'll take you to and show you in another update. Um, I had thrown some seeds in a tank um, day before the full moon in May because I would lost so many tomatoes and I just threw seeds in a tank to see what would happen. And I got a bunch of tomato plants out of them. So that's how we're going to be planting from now on is instead of planting inside I'm going to plant directly into my tanks. The full moon in May and let them be and let them naturally do what they do and may the best survive because up here on the plains of North Dakota we have to grow and I think I've said this before we have to grow our gardens um, Darwin style the strongest survive all right on to this one this here has a bunch of small onions popping up but mainly all I'm growing is mushrooms in this one. No, these are not poisonous mushrooms. Um, none of these mushrooms are hurt you. These mushrooms come from all the different layers of wood chips in here. I mean, I've got tons of mushrooms, guys. I'm growing more mushrooms <laughs> than I am onions. Um, we're not eating any of the mushrooms because we have mushroom allergies in our house. So basically they're just growing and dying and growing and dying and planting themselves over and over and over again. But I'm just going to let them be. If onions come to full, fru full 
fruition, then I'll be happy. If not, then oh well. Over here, I've got some really nice onions coming in. Not all of them are big and beautiful, but a lot of them are, so I'm happy. I'm gonna just let these be, see what happens, let them grow and harvest the onions I do get. These are the red burgundies and oh, that other one I got from MI Gardener. I'll have to look it up and have my husband put the name across the screen down here. But I know it's red burgundy and something else. All right, over to my pots now. Here, um, again, mushrooms popping up because of the wood chips. These are not poisonous mushrooms. They will not harm you. Um, these are carrots that are about two weeks old. I'm growing many different stages of carrots to try to get as much of a carrot harvest as I possibly can. Um, I want to, I have absolutely no plain carrots left on my shelf. All the carrots left on my shelf are the maple glazed ones. And I can't use maple glazed carrots for soups and stews. I mean, I can, but they don't necessarily taste the greatest in certain kinds of soups and stews. So, I want plain carrots, so I'm growing as many carrots as I can. Um, this is random carrot mix. I had like four or five different types of carrots left and just a few seeds left of each kind of carrot. So, I made up a big carrot mix and just put all the carrots right in here. Next, this is a um, lemon basil that I got from, mmm, it smells so good. I wish I had smell of vision you guys. Um, this is a lemon basil I got at the farmer's market at the same time I got the second round of peppers because I wanted to have seeds from a lemon basil plant. Um, I'm going to save them and specifically grow them next year isolated in their own tank all by themselves so that I can get a bunch of lemon basil seeds. This is lettuce seeds. <laughs> this is a piece of grass. This is the type of lettuce that we don't like eating so I always pull these. We want these sweet flat leaf broad leaf lettuces and another piece of grass. Um, I just planted um, all of these. Like I said, we don't like these kinds of, my kids don't like these kinds of lettuces, so they only like these broad flat leaf things. So I pull these ones so that all the energy goes into the broad flat leaf. Okay, um, I planted these two weeks ago. They're a Burpee Easy Pod Gourmet Mix. Um, they were f little seeds that I, I'm, I'm imagining that they probably were um, fertilized with something. Um, I'm not going to worry too much because these aren't going to produce much lettuce. So they'll end up being like just a few pieces of lettuce on sandwiches or wraps. These won't be full salads. Um, I've just got a bunch of lettuces at different stages. Different types of lettuces at different stages so that I can try to get myself a full harvest um, for most of the summer and fall. Next is some cilantro. Um, the seeds came from a friend. He'd had a bunch of them in his house for a long time. Um, they were old and they were sitting there and he just said here see what you can do So that's what I'm doing seeing what I can do nothing over here has seemed to want to pop up But all this cilantro is popping up and doing nicely, so I'm just gonna keep watering it keep uh, Taking care of it and see what happens All right next this is another pot of lettuce. This is MI Gardener leaf lettuce mix. Um, I planted this three weeks ago. Um, these ones were two weeks ago. This is three weeks ago. Um, 
I ha like I said, I have lettuce at all kinds of different stages so that we can harvest and eat lettuce all summer long and hopefully most of the fall. Um, there's a couple of spots where I've already harvested most of the lettuce, so I'm going to be replanting the lettuce in those spots soon. But for now, we have absolutely enjoyed having tons of lettuce for my kids to just come and cut themselves. Like that tank over there that's now tomatoes, that was one giant lettuce tank. We ate it all up and moved on to that one. So as soon as that tomatoes get bigger and stronger, here in another week and a half, I'll be planting lettuce around them to uh, grow some lettuce. All right, next to the lettuce is uh, onions. Again, this is just a random onion mix. I took a bunch of different uh, types of onions, mixed them together in one of my little seed planting tray things that I have. And brought them out and planted them in a pot. Um, is that? Yes, that's an onion. For a second there, I was wondering if that was grass. But no, that is an onion. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to let them be. And any kind of onions I can pick and harvest come this fall is a success for me. Here, again, more lettuce. More lettuce. Um, this is, oh, let's get this stuff out of here. So energy and stuff doesn't go to this. Again, this is just gonna be um, lettuce for wraps and sandwiches. I'm not expecting these to get big and full like that one. Um, these are just, you know, uh, in between, quote unquote, in between lettuces when um, my lettuces are in between stages of growing. Sorry about the noise, my neighbor's coming home with um, his demo derby vehicle. All right, this is uh, carrots, a big patch of carrots. These had been on the side of the house over there with all the pots. But I moved it over to here so that it could drain on top of all of my marigolds that are coming in. These are marigold seeds that I've been growing for 15 years. My grandma grew them for 40, 50 years before that. Um, and my great grandma grew them. Um, the original flowers that these seeds came off of were seeds that were given to my great grandma 90 years ago when they first came to the United States. And then 15 years ago when I took over, because my grandma grew the seeds after my great grandma went into an apartment building, my grandma got her big seed box. My grandma continued to grow the marigolds and other seeds for many, many years. Um. And then when my great grandma went into the nursing, when my grandma went into the nursing home, because I'm the third generation to grow these, my great grandma went into the nursing home, my grandma started growing them. My grandma went into the nursing home, we went on, we moved on to their two acre property, and I got the seed box and I started growing them, and these are marigolds. Every year we just plunk the seeds into the ground, and whatever decides to come up, we collect. Um, the seeds from those flowers and grow more um, That's what all the marigolds are in my yard this year this one. I've got my first flower coming up This marigold this year So yay, I'm happy These are not things I want growing All right here on top of the onions Next to the tomatoes, by everything else, up here, is a marigold that we grew from flowers. Ooh, look at that. I got a second marigold flower coming in. I think these are going to be my fire orange ones. I have yellow ones. I have golden ones. I have fiery red orange ones, and I have solid orange ones that grow. 
it all depends upon what seeds decide to propagate that year for me. All right, um, more onions in here along with the marigold. Okay, I've already talked about all these. Um, this, this is another carrot. No, this isn't a carrot mix. This is um, Parisian carrots. They are meant to be grown in shallow pots. They're short little fat carrots grown for container gardening. I got them from MI Gardener, so I'm growing them this year and seeing if we like them and how they turn out. In here, um, this half is oregano and something else mess. Um, and then over here is onions and again, something else mess. I think these are some kind of weed that are popping up. I have to let everything get bigger before I start pulling so I know the difference. Well, I know that is one of those stupid. And this here is oregano. But I want to let everything get a little bit bigger before I start doing too much pulling of plants and separating them out. I'm hoping that eventually I'll be able to turn this big tank here into a reoccurring... Um, oregano tank so that it can just every year die back and every year come back and I don't have to do anything for it it just does what it wants to do all right down there is marigolds I planted but they haven't done anything so I'm just kind of ignoring it and right here this is a wildflower so I'm just letting it grow and do its thing and here this is a huge mix of different basil seeds like a huge mix um this particular fat patch right here um last summer last fall when everything died i just clipped the tops off and buried the tops of the basil plants right in the pot so this whole strip right here is the seed pod top of um, a basil um, this here is the seed top pod top of a basil and same with this here all the rest of these are seeds that I randomly threw in here I had a whole bunch of random basil seeds and I just threw them in to see what would happen I'm slowly thinning them as they're starting to come up I've pulled plugs out of a few spots for um, some of the tanks and then the back also um, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of uh, encouraging I wonder what kind of basil that is I think that might be that mammoth basil I got several of these funny looking basils I think this is that mammoth basil anyways I'm letting them fight for the ability to grow and fight for the ability to I'm letting them Darwinism themselves so that whatever does come to full seed and whatever I do save seeds from will be plants that want to survive and that will put have more accustomed to this solar minimum cold weather we got going on all right, next one. This was lettuce seeds. It hasn't done nothing but grow um, weeds, so I'll be planting it in there again. Um, this is a weed. This is cilantro, those same cilantro seeds from that friend of mine who had a bunch of cilantro seeds around, and only these two little ones have popped up, so I'm going to be babying them. And... As this stuff here gets bigger, these weeds get bigger, I'll pull them. Here, I did have at one point six onions in here, but I'm down to four. So I'm still just gonna baby them and let them be and see what comes about. Same here, I've got three little onion seeds doing what they're doing, so I'm letting them be and seeing what comes about. No onions popped up in that one. This is that parsley tank I paint planted in my house 
this spring at the same time I planted all those tomatoes um, and it's happy and doing well and then I've got two more things of lettuce but they got chewed up by bugs so I'm just gonna let them be and not expect anything out of them and same thing here with radishes they got all eaten up and bit up by bugs so I don't know and then on the end here I have a random patch of basil coming in so I'm just gonna let it all be and then here in this one I don't know how or why but for some reason a bunch of pepper seeds decided to pop up for me all right guys there is the front patch we've gone over everything and how everything has died back and or come back and or still survived the crazy spring we've had here. All right guys, we'll see you in the next one. And remember, stay positive. Bye.